All right. Cool. So let's get started. So since we have such a such a large group, uh, what 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 are our job roles here? We can even go one by one. There's only six of you. So uh, what what? How many of you are the ones that are in charge of hiring the developers or hire hiring developers? Yes. In the future. In the, okay. Uh, how many of you that are hiring developers are developers? Okay. So it's, you know that's an inter that's its own dynamic. Obviously, if you if you already have expertise and you're hiring people with the same expertise or hopefully the same expertise. Okay. Um, it's just small business owners looking for somebody to help with their site. Yeah, help help with the project. Okay. Great. You're more the target than any of these other people. But uh, well, I'll I'll try to tailor a few few bits to everyone. Um, who who haven't I touched? What what's your uh, interest here? Uh I'm an IT consultant to a, uh, a non-profit board. Okay. I'm an IT director in real life. <laughs> right. Um, and the, the non-profit that I provide um, pro bono IT consulting for, um, we've gone through three website developments and uh, every single time it's been a Experience. Can I ask which? Uh, so I'm on a nonprofit board doing IT, IT help with as well. What? What can I ask? What nonprofit? Uh, Midwest Career Educators. Okay. All right. You? Back. I'm a freelancer. You're a freelancer. Great. All right. Well, you're gonna like this because a uh, big premise of this talk is that most people aren't bad freelancers. They're just bad for your project or you really set them up poorly to be a good freelancer for you. So let's start there. Um, I like to talk about the, the concept of an advocate, an advocate for your project. You, you're not looking for someone to just help you with your website, right? You want someone who is ultimately going to help you achieve your goals and hopefully do it pretty low cost and, and do it well. Right, you know that, that's that's what we all want, regardless of the role you're in. That's what you're looking for. So, you need to think of think of it when you're looking for a, a freelancer. You need to think of it as I'm looking for someone to help me. I'm not I'm not I'm looking for I'm looking for a contract to hire. That's not what that's not what I'm looking for here. I don't, I don't need just somebody to be a code monkey for me for a little while. I don't need somebody to just uh, help me with SEO things. I need someone who actually cares a little bit about my project. Obviously, the most the more buy-in you can get from the person you're looking for, the better it's going to work for you in the long run. Now, how do you get that buy-in? Because they don't all just love you and want to work on your projects, right? Um, the number one way to not get the buy-in <laughs> is start here. Don't, don't go, hey, I have this thing, I need it done. Maybe you, you're not even, you're just the one that's been tasked with finding the person to get this work done. You're, it's, it's, your, it's your small business website. You're not actually totally involved with the website. You haven't used it much before. You're not, you, you're not even that interested in it. But your boss has asked you to find somebody to help build a, an event calendar for you or something like that. Well, starting off with, or starting off looking at it from the viewpoint of, I just need to get this done. I don't care how it's done. I just need to get it done because my boss says I need to get it done. Terrible way to go about things. Even if you don't verbally, you know, indicate that to the the freelancer you're interviewing or, or potentially already hired, even if you don't indicate that to them, they will feel it. They will know it as you work through the project. At some point, it's going to come up, and you're just going to be like, "I just need this done. All right. I don't. I don't care how you think the best way to get this done is. I just. I need it done. My boss needs it next week. We need it. We need it next Wednesday. It has to be done by then." Bad way to start. Don't do that. Okay. So, be your own advocate is the main concept there. All right. Where to look? Who to trust? What to have prepared for that person when you find them or persons? All right. Where to look? Upwork, Elance, Google it. There's a million places. Um, conferences. Good job. You're here, all six of you. Uh, acquaintances who work at agencies or just work with WordPress develop, uh, uh, focused businesses. That's, uh, that's where they may not be the one, but they're probably going to know someone that could help you with your, with your project. Uh, along that same line, who, who should you trust with this? Uh, first bullet point, family and friends, don't, don't, 
it's not that you can't trust the recommendation. It's that inevitably there's going to be a situation where your your husband's uh, best friend knows WordPress and he works on a project and it doesn't go well. Well, now you got yourself a messy personal situation on top of a bad project. Bad, bad news for everybody, right? So let's just let's just nix that all together. Um, again, seek professionals to find other professionals. Now, when I say professionals, I don't mean someone like myself that works at a big agency. Doesn't have to be that. Just someone that you know has done this well and has done it for a while. You don't necessarily know that 100% yourself, but you've got uh, a good reason to believe that they are that professional. Again, you're not hiring them right away. This is just a starting point to maybe get in contact and find these people. Uh, what to have prepared? A lot of people will show up, to, again, I don't freelance anymore, but when I did, I would, I would meet up with a potential client and they would say, here's the link to my current website, we'd look at it, they would verbalize a few things that they want done, and maybe even point to another site that has done something similar that they're looking for. Not, not adequate, not good, not, not, again, not a good starting point. Um, Last point here, the preface statement of work, rough draft, and then a prize. Your prize is hopefully a good project in the end. So even if it's just bullet points on a piece of paper or you, you know, hopefully you've used a computer to write this list, uh, <laughs> some sort of bullet point of everything that you think you want executed with this project. Don't just say, I want an event calendar. Okay, what do you want the event calendar to do? Well, there's tons of event calendars out there. I don't know, I just, I want, I want something that tracks my events and is on a calendar that they can click. Again, not adequate. You're going to need some details here. You're going you're to need to say what type of events are they. Maybe, they have, maybe these events have specific facets to them that you need to account for. You don't want to throw that in in the ninth hour to your developer that you hired working on this project and, and just expect them to do it because they probably didn't plan for it and it's going to cause problems. Okay. Questions are pretty straightforward so far. All right, the WordPress Pro. There are many flavors of a WordPress Pro or knowing WordPress. I don't know if a lot of people say this. I've heard a couple people say that someone knows WordPress. It kind of makes me laugh, so I, <laughs> I use it here. Um, all right, so you have a professional develop developer. They obviously have another full-time job. What, what, what that full-time job is doesn't matter to you. It's a separate thing altogether. They are typically going to be your highest cost. They've been doing it a while. They feel pretty good about themselves whether you think they deserve it or not. All right, so they're probably gonna cost you a bit. Um, more than likely, they're also going to deliver the best work to you. Now, what's missing from that? Again, timeline. So if you need it in a month, well again, if you need it in a month, you probably got problems anyway. That's, that's a bad start again. But they, they have a lot of other priorities and you're not going to be number one ultimately for them. Okay, uh, the site builder. This is somebody who can't do custom development for you. They're not, they're, they're not necessarily a coder. They may moonlight a bit as, as a coder, but if they're looking to use 20 plugins to solve your problem, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. I'm not bad mouthing plugins. No way, not gonna do that at a WordPress conference. But uh, if that's what they're looking to do, then just know that that is going to be a constraint on what they're doing for you. So don't be shocked if at some point in the project they say they can't do something because the plugins they've recommended or are trying to use don't do those things. So again, not a huge red flag, but just be aware that that could become a thing. Lower cost on developers, they're not doing all the custom development. They're, they're doing research on plugins, they're, they're figuring out how to solve this problem for you. Really, they're, just, they're a solutions delivery person. It's what they're trying to do. Power user. This is, uh, so a lot, of, you know, a lot of people are using premium themes that have page builders of some sort, right? So I myself hate the page builder solutions. A lot of people love them. A lot of people are amazing with them. They're super good with them and they do really good things and I, I can't believe they did it without a developer. Those people are great if that's what you're working with. They're also going to be pretty low cost in reference or in, in, uh, in comparison to all right, full stack freelancer. This is where now you're in the wild west. Yeah, you don't know 
if they're a full-time freelancer and maybe they've been doing it for 10 years and they're actually better than that professional developer at the top, you don't know if they're in between jobs and they just need work. Again, not necessarily a problem. You might have a great opportunity there to get some really good work for some, for some pretty low cost. Uh, or maybe they're just new. I mean, this is a fact of life in the WordPress space. Beginners, a lot of them start with some freelance projects. There's nothing wrong with that, but you just need to have your expectations set for if that person is a beginner. Now, you gotta figure all this stuff out, right? <laughs> they don't walk around with a sign on that says beginner, right? You have to figure these things out. Uh, so again, referral source and their previous work, if they haven't, matters a lot more for the full stack freelancer than somebody working at an agency where you can kind of, you, you have an idea of what they've been working on and it's already, it, it, it's, it's more established. Again, one is not better than the other, but you need to be aware of the constraints and things to look for. All right, back to this. Be your own advocate, what you should know and where you should learn it and when you should let others be the ones taking care of the job for you. All right, I'm gonna go through this one very quickly. So, what to learn, you know, if you're making a new site and you've never used WordPress before, go to wordpress.com, make one, play around with it, get to know the content management system a little bit. At a minimum, it's gonna be good to know that there are posts and there are media and, <laughs> and you uh, can use them in different ways, in categories and tags. So. Get to, get to know the platform a little bit. Uh, if you already have an existing site and you, again, back to the event calendar, maybe, I mean, it's not hard for you to go out there and look at event calendars that already exist. Maybe there's some demos you can play with. Get to know some of the features that you're looking for and articulate that to whoever it is you're looking to hire. I dropped some links in uh, where you can do a little bit of learning on your own. Some of these sites will go super deep, some of them won't. Uh, the last link there is a way more lengthy list of places to find WordPress developers. Again, you can find WordPress developers. Finding out if they're right for you and your project is, is the key. That's what I'm getting at here today. All right, how much is too much? When are you trying to overdo it? When are you going too far? When are you becoming dangerous to your own goals? Uh, if you didn't know WordPress a week ago and you're uh, trying to paste snippets of PHP code in places, you, you've gone too far. That's, you're, 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 in, you're in a very dangerous place now. Please, please stop until you feel like you've talked to just anyone else about how to do these sorts of things. You don't have to hire them, but at least get a little bit, get a little bit of support on that. Um, and then, yeah, I have a note there. Tinkering with code can, and it doesn't always. That, that's the, this is the dangerous part, right? You can put three snippets in. Hey, okay. It's doing the stuff you want to do. All right, here we go. It's good. And then that fourth one, boom, white screen. Problems. And you have no clue how to fix it because, well, the place I just put this code into, I can't get to it anymore. <laughs> so that's, that's a problem. Avoid that problem. And also, and I'm guilty of this, I've done it to people before. If you call me at 2 a.m. because your site's down and there's a problem, granted it hasn't been at 2 a.m., but you get the point. Uh, I'm not gonna be the most friendly with my rate, if I, especially if I haven't worked with you before and I ask what the heck did you do and you're like, I don't really know, I was doing this and this and this. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you. It would, it's gonna cost you a lot more than it would have to just hire somebody in the first place. All right, so, Preparing to talk to your freelancer or, or many freelancers. So pre-interview process, pre-even thinking about an interview actually is what this is. The art of the scope. All right, so contractor that's new to your business, you, you cannot overload them unless you uh, structure all the information, you're giving them very, very poorly and you just forward them on your emails. That is definitely a bad overload. But if you prepare as much information as you can about your project, your, your business goals for this project, and anything you might know about it technically, maybe it's, maybe it's nothing you need to go ask some people, go ask the people that you need to ask. Uh, bring that with you, have it prepared. Um, 
having a good statement of work is going to save you just so, so much trouble in the long run. I mean, we've had a few more talks here today about that same sort of stuff, right? So statement of works are, they're, they're, they're real lifesavers. They're going to just be so helpful. I, I, I don't even, I could just say that on repeat for the next 30 minutes and be all right, I think. There, not enough people do this. How many people have prepared a statement of work in this room? All right, we get, okay. Good. Uh, do you think you made a good statement of work? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> how how in depth was it? How many how many pages? Three or four. Three or four. How how big was the how uh, what was the budget? Uh, Thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. So that sounds a little crazy to me. I no no offense meant at all. I, just, I mean that's a lot of money to sign off on three to, three to four pages. I'm getting, at most you were talking high level items, I would guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, did it end at three to four pages? Like, was the sign scope three to four pages? No, that would be like the summary. Okay, all right. <laughs> good. Detailed required. Good news, so, all right, good, good, good. Perfect, awesome. All right, so, yes, all right, great starting point then, perfect. Um, again, all the high level things you can, you can bring and have prepared uh, are going to help you a lot throughout the entire process, not just the beginning where you're trying to find the right developer. For, or, I keep saying developer, contractor of any kind. It's not, it may not be a development problem. All right, what to include? I touched on this a little bit already. Uh, so I mentioned I've worked on scopes as detailed as what color a button should be and where the link should go. It sounds stupid and simple, but those are the sort, not only is that important so to make sure the developer delivers or the person delivers what you want. It's also important, it also comes in immensely useful when you go testing things. <laughs> I mean, it, you're, you're basically writing out your test matrix right then and there. You're writing out what, what you're going to go test before you pay these people for all the work they did for you. It's, it, again, it all starts with the statement part. All right, um, uh, an added benefit, you find gaps that you didn't consider. So you're working on the event calendar, and like the thing I brought up where, so you, you say you need an event calendar, it needs to, you, uh, you put on, uh, you're a yoga instructor, and you need your yoga classes in there. Well, uh, I don't know yoga that well, that's probably a bad example of that. I assume there's uh, many different types of yoga, right? So those classes need to have some sort of taxonomy attached to them to tell you what type of yoga class it is. Okay, well, you may not have noted that your first pass through. You should do that because when you're when you go to write the step where you say uh, the type of class should be indicated here, you you realize, hey, I need to tell them that hey, these yoga classes that we're making the calendar for have types <laughs> that they need to plan for. Um, so yeah, you have to you do have to think like a developer or the contractor a little bit in these situations. All right. Fixed bid. This is one of the things I can't advocate for any more than, uh, yeah. It's, if you are engaging a new contractor any kind, and a lot of contractors won't like this, but if you are engaging a new contractor, you should be working with a fixed bid. Now, oftentimes fixed bid can actually cost you, the business owner, or the person hiring the, the contractor more money. But I think more often than not, it saves you a boatload of money. It also saves you a boatload of stress. Because if you have detailed requirements and you say this is a $10,000 job, they sign off on it and the, um, some, something comes up with uh, hosting or whatever, they have to determine whether or not they really think it's worth bringing that back to you and saying that it's an issue and they need more money. Most, nine times out of 10, they're not going to ask for more money. If they do, you probably have yourself a bad through answer there. But again, we're going to work through some steps to avoid getting to that point and having that person do that. Um, fix bid, do it. That's that's the end and end all be all here. Uh, so I note that it should ensure project success and to a certain extent the quality of it. And that's because again, you had all of those things laid out in your statement of work and they have to accomplish it for for that for to get paid 
in the end. <laughs> they have to accomplish all the things you laid out to get paid, right? It's, if it was an hourly engagement, they may talk you into and you may be uh, susceptible to saying, all right, we can do this after launch. Or suddenly there's this imaginary phase two that you never planned on existing that now exists with this project. And also phase two, probably gonna ever happen is what happens with a lot of these. You, st you, you start planning out of phase two as you go through phase one, and then nobody has the appetite for phase two by the time it's over. So, doing this right up front, a full fixed bid is going to pre hopefully prevent that phase two when you're working with somebody where you're doing an hourly engagement of some kind. All right, <laughs> we'll make it a little more colorful here. Uh, Engagement types ranked, fixed bid, you got a full statement of work. Uh, in a fixed bid, there does tend to be a little bit more us versus them situation with the contractor you're hiring. So they're, they may not be quite as on board and really trying to achieve all the things you, you want and going the extra mile and doing those little extra things for you if they're not paid hourly to do it. <laughs> so it's just, a, it's just a fact of life. It's how humans work, right? Um, so you do lose a little bit there with the fixed bid that you just should be aware of. Uh, now, you've done a fixed bid with this developer or contractor, sorry. You trust that they're doing a good job, you like what they did previously, you got another project about the same size that you're, or you're assuming is about the same, same size with them, but there's a lot more variables involved and it's getting messy and you're really not sure if you're gonna be able to uh, nail down a scope that you're both happy with. Okay, go ahead and try out that hourly engagement with them. It's probably going to be all right for you. <laughs> uh, again, that's more than likely going to lead to the higher costs because all of those little gotchas that may come up along the way, it's just going to, I mean, they'll fix them for you, but they're going to, it's going to cost time and money. Okay. Uh, signature scribbled on a napkin with a crayon. Still better than hourly with a new contractor. Don't, I, I don't know why you do it. I don't even feel like I have to say it because most people don't, wouldn't do it. I mean, I mean, has anyone in here hired someone hourly that they didn't really know they hadn't worked with pre previously? Okay, good. So a, a large part of why this talk exists is because I talked to a lot of people that didn't and they're the ones that start to get really upset about WordPress developers and getting burnt by these WordPress contractors. And I, I just, I, I don't know, I think I'm done with it. I think I just can't find anybody good to do any work for me. I keep getting burnt is the word that always comes up. Well, usually it's this situation. Their requirements got way out of hand and nobody was happy. They missed deadlines. They didn't get delivered what they wanted. The developers, developer contractor, is frustrated as hell and just done with this client. Bad news for everybody in a lot of cases. All right, so you found some people that you want to talk to. Here's kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, process, things to ask, things to go through, so we'll touch on these. So present them your project. Keep it simple at first. Don't overwhelm them immediately. I'm saying it first. This is all still the same meeting. <laughs> All right, but let's start with something real quick. I need an event calendar, and I, I run this website. We need an event calendar for our yoga classes. Okay? Ask them what they do. Not, again, back to the, uh, back to the many flavors of knowing WordPress. Not all of them do what you maybe think they do. Um, they, you know, the fact of life for a freelancer, when they're on a website like a uh, an Upwork or something like that is they got to put all these tags on their profile and their skills to try and get noticed. Um, some of them work that way. I guess others they actually did on the project. But they're looking for work. They're hungry for work. They want work. They may go outside of their expertise to try to get that job. And that's not the greatest for you, right? You, you, may, you may think you're hiring an expert with jQuery to solve a problem with jQuery and it's and they're, and they're really not. They're just really trying to land a job. I mean, you, you have to understand that because it's, it's a fact of life when you're looking for contractors. Not all of them are truthful. All right, so I just dumped a few questions in here. Um, 
general things to <laughs> to ask them just to get a little bit of a feeling of what you know if they're uh, if they're just good in general, not necessarily good for your project because again, that's going to be unique to your project. But hey, do you use version control? Shocking number of people do not. This is developer specific one right here. Um, if they don't use version control, you don't rule them out entirely, but you can pretty well rule them out, I, I think. Um, are they, how are they going to solve this problem? So you've just explained to them a little bit about what you want. You want the event calendar. You ask them, are they going to be doing this with custom development? Are they going to, do they know of a plugin they're going to use to solve your problem? Okay, get a, get a handle for that. And that's where you get the feel for what kind of pro they are. Because they're not actually going to, again, they don't walk around with a beginner sign on. You don't know exactly what they do. Um, ask for their password. Again, most people, I think, do this. This is nothing, this is not a novel idea of any kind. Most people do this. Uh, if you know one of their referrals, don't tell them you know their <laughs> one of their referrals or people you've got word for. This is another one of those keep it business, not personal situations. Okay, it's it's a helpful thing to tell. It's a very helpful rule to follow. Um, if you don't believe me, go ahead and try <laughs> try it out yourself and, and uh, see how it goes. I guess. Um, don't just ask for what have, what have you done? Okay, well I've worked on the WordCamp website. All right, don't take that at, at its at face value. What did you do? Specifically, what did you work on? Show me what you worked on. Explain to me what you worked on. Now, maybe they built the whole darn thing. That's cool too, but at least find out if that's the case. All right, because a lot of these people have worked with a team of six to build a website. You don't know what they actually did. So try to get a handle on that. Again, you don't have to be uh, a, a, a long time developer to understand whether or not they had a big piece of, of functionality that they built or not. Okay. Need to know if they can meet your timeline. That's super important, obviously. You gotta have it done in six months or 90 days. Okay, so ask them what, what they got going on. Get a feel for it. Don't just ask, or don't, sorry, not even ask. Usually what happens is, I have this project, you guys both know you're talking about a project, you're discussing it, you say, okay, I need it done in 90 days. Typically it's a, yeah, I can do that, yes, or no, I cannot. That's not an adequate discussion on that piece of it, in my opinion. You wanna get a larger feel for if they have any other projects going on. You wanna know if you're going to be a priority in this situation. Now, this more applies to that $2,000, $3,000 side project. If, if you're engaging them for uh, a massive project, you can pretty safely assume that you're going to be the priority, I, but you'll still want to check on it. Um, but yeah, if you're just, you're just trying to get a, a little side project finished um, or, or a small task like an event calendar for yoga classes, you need to know how realistic their yes, I can do that is for the timeline. Okay? Um, ask them their hourly rate. Even if you don't plan on engaging them with an hourly, hourly rate, again, uh, hopefully you're not because it's the first time you're making one. But get that. It's good to know because when they give you that fixed bid, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit of a negotiation tactic for you. Um, especially when that bid comes back at $15,000. You were expecting it to be in the $10,000 neighborhood, so you start trying to slash a few features, we'll say, from, from your scope. Okay, then you start to get a feel for, uh, are they really, sh are, they, are they slashing enough when I slash these features? Oh, well it seems like that would have been a bit more. Now, you're gonna annoy the crap out of them with this. <laughs> Freelancers don't love that, nobody really does, but in the end, you're trying to get the best value and the best product, right? Okay. Um, what do they need from you to actually get you the bid uh, on time? Because in theory, you're talking to five, six, 15 pe different people about trying to get this done. Um, what, do you, what, do they, what do they need from you right here and now to actually get a solid bid? Now, you're gonna provide them that statement of work that you haven't fully shown them yet. 
and they'll say, oh, great, yeah, I'll review this and get, you know, get back, get back to the data. You're going to give them the full timeline of your spectrum, which you already will have at this point. Um, and you're going to maybe go through all of it right then. I don't know, that's your, that's your call. Um, <laughs> the last point here with this sort of thing is a lot of times, again, these side projects, you already have an existing site, you're trying to add the event calendar for yoga classes. And they say, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm working with. I don't know, you know oh, you're at HostGator or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how hard this will be. I don't know what other plugins you're using. You're like, well, I'm not sure what other plugins I'm using. And they say, well, can I just give you, <laughs> give you access? And they, they do it. People have given me unprecedented access to their, to their code and projects and uh, the ability to take everything down if I were crazy or just didn't know what I was doing without any sort of agreement in place. So, again, not calling anyone out, don't do that. People do, don't let it be you, okay? All right, final exam. Don't be any of those things I just discussed. <laughs> this is the short version of this. All right, what does the contractor need? Everything you can give them, I should have said in an organized manner. Okay, again, not 100 email forwards with things from coworkers and whatever else in every discussion you've ever had on this feature you're trying to build. Um, a bulleted list or a statement of work. Um, the statement of work is going to be a living document. That thing's going to evolve until you put signatures on it. Okay, it's not it's not done when you show it to them and, talk, and engage them the first time. All right, the iron square. So most people have heard of the iron triangle. Cost, time, scope. You can't typically have all three the way you want it, right? So um, I say there's a, there's a fourth side of this it's square. There's also quality. So if you can't sacrifice time, this is the number one that most people cannot sacrifice time. No, I have to have it as an event on, you know, on, on Christmas, and we got to have it two weeks before that. Uh, if you can't sacrifice on that, you're going to sacrifice on literally every other, everything else. <laughs> it's going to cost you more. It's going to, you're probably going to have to cut some features. And it might not be as good or uh, uh, as well built as you would have hoped it would be. Okay? Again, that makes sense to most people. But it's something you really need to consider when you're preparing to talk to a freelancer. Um, and as a note, always sacrifice time when possible. Time is the one that is the most, that has the most leeway in most situations. And if there really isn't truly a hard deadline, don't make an artificial hard deadline on things and cost yourself more money. I mean, if you have the budget, then fine, go for it. But especially when you're engaging freelance contractors, they only have so much time. They'll sign as just about as big of a bid as you'll try to agree to them with. But they only have so much time. You just, I mean, they just can't get things done as quickly as you maybe would hope, and you have to be realistic about that, okay? All right, that's, that was that last one, too. Uh, with the last note of don't just throw more money at it, which is the last thing I just discussed. All right. I guess not. That's all. How did I do on the time? Eh, not bad. Okay. Questions? <laughs> it's cool. You don't have to come up with fake ones. I'm, you're not going to hurt my feelings, guys. Like I said, I've done this one before. If, uh, if you do have any questions or you want to email me and ask for any any assistance uh, with, uh, hey, does this statement of work look all right or whatever else, I'm always up for helping people with that sort of thing. Um, of course, I, I am a consultant with this stuff, so I a lot of what I do for my contractor gig and freelance is I help small businesses. I'm typically the middle guy that helps interview and find the contractors. So basically, I take all of that and I apply it <laughs> when I'm working for you, okay? Uh, could you explain again like what the downside is for saying who your referral was? 
who yeah so it's uh it's tied to it's tied to the family and acquaintance connection thing okay so if if the project goes sideways you you don't want them to know that oh yeah that's uh the the person that you're referring is actually another person i work with or whatever yeah i would just yeah. keep it quiet <laughs> I mean, so now what I'm not saying though is that you can't go talk to that person that you know and ask about them. I would absolutely do that. But what I'm saying is you, there's no need to let the contractor know that you know the person that they've worked with. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, thanks guys and, and gals.